Welcome to this Dash Mini lecture. My name is Alessia De Biase and I'm a PhD candidate at the University Medical Center Groningen working on artificial intelligence applications in radiotherapy with a focus on head and neck cancer. In this mini lecture, I will talk about the ECTOR 2021 challenge on head and neck tumor segmentation and outcome prediction in PET CT images and how my team and I approach the task of tumor segmentation using deep learning. ECTOR 2021 is a challenge on automatic head and neck tumor segmentation and outcome prediction in PET and CT images. It's an international programming challenge organized by a team of researchers from ISO Valais between June and September 2021. This challenge was presented at the 24th International Conference on Medical Image Computing and Computer Assistance Intervention, MICAI, on September 27, 2021. The tasks proposed were three. Task one, about the automatic segmentation of head and neck primary tumors in PET and CT images. Task two and three, about the prediction of patient outcomes namely progression-free survival from the PET-CT images and the available clinical data with or without using the ground truth annotation of the primary tumors. But let's give some background information about the topic. Head and neck cancer is a really common cancer. It accounts for 3% of all cancer worldwide and over 1.5% of all cancer deaths in the United States. Radiotherapy is an effective treatment in these cases. Therefore, to deliver a high dose in the tumor area without damaging surrounding normal tissues, proper delineation of the tumor contour needs to be performed. Usually, the delineation of the gross tumor volume, GTVT, is performed manually by experts on multimodal images. The difficulty of manually segmenting head and neck tumors lies in the fact that surrounding normal tissue are really similar to tumors in that region and that cannot be distinguished easily by even experienced clinicians, especially in CT images. Manual delineation of contours is then prone to error. This method is extremely time consuming since radiation oncologists have to do the contouring in three perpendicular cross sections, starting in the actual slices and then going in the sagittal and the coronal views. These are the reasons why AI methods for automatic segmentation have gained interest in the recent years. The dataset used in the challenge contains in total 325 cases of aligned PET CT images from a total of six centers, four from Canada, one from France, and one from Switzerland. PET and CT imaging are the modalities of choice for the initial staging and follow-up of head and neck cancer. CT provides information about the anatomy. PET provides information about the metabolic activity of the tumor. The total number of training cases is 224 from five different centers. The number of test cases used in the final ranking is 101 from two centers. Only one center of the training set is also present in the test set. All cases were annotated by experts and only the annotation of the training cases were provided. For consistency, the GTVT primary gross tumor volume for these patients were annotated by experts following the same procedure. In order to validate the performance of different models, we chose to create an internal test set of 45 patients from the provided 224 training cases. For the remaining 179 cases, we split them in training and validation sets either randomly or by keeping one center out each time. Both our training and test sets include cases from all the five centers. For the segmentation task, CSV files containing bounding boxes of the oropharyngeal cavity for each patient were also provided. 
The quality of the performance of the algorithms is assessed only within the volume of the bounding boxes at the original CT resolution, based on the die similarity coefficient and on the Hausdorff distance between the ground truth annotation and the predictions of the implemented algorithms. Since the evaluation results are calculated on bounding boxes of 144 times 144 times 144 that contain the tumor region, the images were first resampled to 1 times 1 times 1 cubic millimeter isotropic resolution and then cropped to that volume size. As a pre-processing technique, we used a z-score normalization. We use two different methods to face this task. The first one is a core learning method with multimodal PET CT. PET and CT images are downsampled by two separate encoder blocks. An encoder step refers to an encoder block for both PET and CT at the same resolution. After each encoder step, the same shared downsampling block, SDB, allows the two modalities to share single modality related information gained in the exact same area of the image. These blocks help to map the PET-CT feature maps to the same spatial region of interest, which can preserve the spatial and structural consistency between them. Feature co-learning blocks take as input a pair of feature maps from the CT encoder and the PET encoder and aim to combine the information learned from each modality. There are two decoder paths, one that uses the output from the SDB from each stage of the encoder as input of, of each decoder, and the other one that uses the output of the FCB from each stage of the encoder as input to each stage of the second decoder, as shown in the figure. The hierarchical skip connection of the feature co-learning module allow feature fusion at different resolutions. Information at different scales is then used for the reconstruction of the prediction in the second branch. The outcome prediction is then obtained as average of the two outputs reconstructed by the two different branches. The second method is a 3D skip SCSE multiscale attention model. This method uses a UNET as backbone and aims to capture the more important information between encoder and decoder feature maps, as well as to get global context information with different scale features. The attention mechanism in the model makes the network focus on the key parts and ignores the irrelevant information. Recently, it has been widely used in computer vision tasks in medical image segmentation, it's been proven to achieve higher performance with smoother edges compared to the normal unit. Multiscale features can usually obtain the characteristics of different receptive fields, and by fusing them at the same level will make the boundary smoother and more accurate. Because the features of each scale have different resolution, they are upsampled to the final resolution and then concatenated. The two methods were compared on the internal test set of 45 patients. For the core learning model, we trained and validated with five-fold cross-validation and we chose the best five models according to the lowest validation loss value. In the SKIP SCSEM training, we used leave one center out cross-validation and we selected the five best models based on the highest die score coefficient on each validation set. The SKIP SCSEM model resulted in higher performance compared to the core learning method in all metrics except precision. In the figure, the distribution of die similarity score, precision and recall calculated on the internal test set are shown using box plot. The results from the core learning model have a more uniform distribution than the ones from the SKIP SCSEM model showing the higher stability of the second method on the test set compared to the first one. The two methods have only one common outlier. Visualizing the CT and the PET for these patients, we noticed that in two out of three cases of the outliers, 
The lower performance can be justified by a dataset related issue, the presence of metal artifacts and improper annotation of the tumor region. For the first patient in the first row, the PET image is quite misleading since there is a big region with high subvalue, which is unrelated to the primary tumor. For this patient, the core learning method detects a really small part of the tumor, while the skip SCSEM method fails. Whereas for patient in the second row, the first method fails while the second one doesn't. The final challenge ranking was based on the mean dice score coefficient and the median Hausdorff distance calculated on all test set images. Our highest dice score was 0.762 on the official test set and it was performed testing the SKIP SCSEM model trained and validated using Live One Center Out cross validation on the entire training set of 224 patients. The results are obtained based on an assembling of five best models on the validation set. We ranked 10 among 41 teams participating in task one with a dice similarity score coefficient and an Ausdorf distance really close to the winner. Conclusions. Aims of both methods are capturing information at different scales and highlighting relevant features from the different image modalities. The SKIP SCSE multiscale attention model focuses on giving smoother and more accurate predictions compared to a normal 3D unit. The core learning method is promising, but having a lot of hybrid parameters that need to be tuned, so it requires a lot of time to be optimized. A good quality ground truth image is the key for a good automatic segmentation model because it affects both the final evaluation and the learning phase. Thank you for your attention.